Hi, I'm Professor David Atlee, and this is Topics in Astronomy. Thanks for joining me. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about scaling relations. What are they, and how they allow us to develop some intuition about the relationships between main sequence stars, their masses, and some of their other important observable properties. Let's get started. First, let's take a step back and remind ourselves what the main sequence is. Main sequence stars are in the long, boring middle stage of their lives where really nothing happens. They fuse hydrogen to helium in their core, they sit in hydrostatic equilibrium, and they just kind of hang out and don't change much. For these main sequence stars, in this stage of their lives, we see a tight relationship between the masses of stars and many of their other important observable properties, including their temperature, their luminosity, and their lifetimes. The scaling relations allow us to construct a mathematical expression that allows us to approximate, say, the luminosity of a star, given what we know about its mass. The first relation that I'll talk to you about is the one that I just alluded to, the connection between luminosity and mass. For stars approximately the same mass as the Sun, we know that luminosity is proportional to mass cubed. So let's say, for example, that we're talking about a star three times the mass of the Sun. This is, strictly speaking, out of the range where this scaling relationship is applicable, but it's just an example. Using that scaling relation, we know that the luminosity of this example star in solar luminosities is equal to the mass of the example star in solar masses cubed. So if this is a three solar mass star, we plug in three for the mass. Three cubed is what? Okay, it's 27. So what does this tell us about the relationship between luminosity and mass for stars near the Sun on the main sequence. What it tells us is that more massive stars are more luminous. So as a star works its way up the main sequence, it's going to increase in both luminosity and mass at the same time. For stars near the Sun, that increase is quite steep. So a small increase in mass means a big increase in luminosity, but in different mass ranges we have different mathematical expressions. Let's look at our next relationship, the relationship between mass and lifetime for a star. Again, for stars similar in mass to the Sun, lifetime goes as mass to the negative 2 power. If you forget how to work negative exponents, remember that m to the negative 2 is the same thing as 1 over m squared. So let's take our example star from the previous slide with 3 times the mass of the Sun and see how long it's going to live. Now again, this example is not strictly applicable. This mass is outside the range where this particular part of the scaling relation works, but still just an example. So we're going to plug in that 3 again. We're going to have 3 to the negative 2 power. So what's 3 to the negative 2? Okay, it's 1 ninth. So if you said 1 ninth, well done. What's this telling us about how long this example star would live? Well, the Sun would sit on the main sequence for about 10 billion years. So if this scaling relationship was perfectly accurate, we would figure out that the mystery star, with three times the mass of the Sun, would live for a little bit more than 1 billion years. So as stars make their way up the main sequence, from low mass to high mass, we see that their lifetimes decrease. Low mass stars live for a really long time, whereas high mass stars have very short lives. And you can think of this kind of as an analogy with a race car. Uh, you have a race car and it has a really big gas tank, like a massive star, but because it's going so fast and like, you know, it's acting like a race car, it's really impressive, it's burning through its fuel at a really prodigious rate, and so it needs to stop and refuel very on very, very short time scales. Whereas, say, a Prius, it's going to have a much smaller gas tank than that race car, but because it's so fuel efficient, 
it can go a very long way and operate for a very long time on that small gas tank. And that's basically true of stars as well, is that the massive stars are the race cars in this analogy. They have big gas tanks, but they burn through it really quickly and they die off soon. Whereas low mass stars, much less massive than the sun, they have relatively small fuel reservoirs, but because they use their fuel only very, very slowly, they tend to stick around for a very long time. And the least massive stars, stars say about a tenth of the mass of the sun or so, will actually live to ages many times the present age of the universe. So in this short video, we've talked a little bit about what scaling relations are, this idea that they allow us to connect the mass of a main sequence star to its observable properties. We looked at two of those scaling relations, the first between mass and luminosity, and the second between mass and lifetime. And we see some important trends. As mass increases, luminosity also increases, whereas as mass increases, lifetime decreases. These scaling relations can be useful, especially if we're trying to put some hard numbers on what we're looking at because they give us an idea of the general trends that we see in stars and give us a way of estimating exactly how much more luminous, say, a star like Vega, which has twice the mass of the sun, is when compared with the sun itself. Thanks for watching, and I hope to talk to you again soon about another topic in astronomy.